Hi everyone, we are about to roast a dark roast and I think lots of people in specialty coffee thinking roasting dark is easy, that you just put it in, make it really dark and drop it, but it actually requires a lot of technique. You, you wanna make sure that you're still <clears throat> developing flavors, that things still taste delicious and that you're controlling it, that it's not just some random darkness, that you have a profile that tastes delicious and that your customers love. I think a big thing for dark roast is people love the comforting flavors, lower acidities, and sort of classic coffee roasts. So what we're gonna do today is try and get all of that out of the stronghold. We're gonna achieve that with a lot of conductive heat and convective heat to make sure that when we're going dark, that we are evenly uh, roasting the coffee. I think that's one of the biggest things that the strongholds can do for dark roasts is making sure that full development is happening across the whole bean so you end up with a great intensity of coffee without it tasting too ashy or burnt. So my settings are almost the same as the previous roasts. I'm at nine for hot air, nine for halogen. My drum heater now is at six and a half. This is gonna put a lot of conductive heat into this roast. So a lot of approaches on more traditional roasters is to go low and slow for dark roast to draw them out for a long time. Because the stronghold can apply heat so evenly and effectively, we're actually gonna keep the roast still pretty short. We're gonna still apply heat in lots of different ways. We're gonna draw out first crack at the end, make a long development time, but I don't need to have a super long roast to get a really effective dark roast. You can see the turnaround uh, versus my reference is pretty much exactly right there which allows us to just focus on making sure this roast is perfect without having to change our momentum or anything like that. You can see my drum surface temperature is pretty high. This is gonna make sure that there's a lot of nice conductive heat going into the roast right now. Once we get out of the drying phase, we're actually even gonna add a little bit more halogen. Halogen does a great job of really penetrating the bean surface. So especially early on, I wanna make sure I get a lot of heat and a lot of development into this coffee because we want it to be a little bit darker. So once we get out of green into yellowing, I'm gonna add a little bit more heat to this roast. Our drum surface temperature is above 500 right now, so that's pretty hot. We're gonna move it down just a little bit, just to make sure that once we hit yellowing that that surface isn't too hot and it's not gonna scorch any of the coffee. I'm gonna step down again, just small steps. So in the medium roast, we would have started to step down our halogen at this point. I'm still gonna keep it nice and high. We're at yellow now, so I'm actually able to even increase it just a little bit, just to make sure we get a good amount of color in this coffee, even before we hit first crack. If we're able to develop the coffee a little bit before first crack, it's gonna make our lives easier later on, because we're not gonna rely just on first crack to get good color development. We'll already have achieved some of it even before the coffee starts to crack. I'm gonna pull a bit more heat out of the drum heater. Now I'm watching, we're at that light tan. Once it hits brown, I'm gonna pull a little bit of halogen out just to make sure we're not scorching anything. I'm still gonna use a lot of halogen on this roast though, really to make sure we get those classic dark roast flavors. I can see it start to go tan. So we're gonna take that halogen from nine and a half down to eight and a half. By keeping my air, hot air temperature high, I'm able to use the other sources of heat to influence flavor. So basically my hot air is giving my momentum, it's giving my energy into first crack, and by using my halogen and my drinker in different ways, that's how I'm manipulating flavor. So basically by using that hot air, I'm able to use the other settings to really change the way the coffee tastes and my roast development. The coffee's hit a light brown now. I'm gonna pull even more heat out of my drum heater, just to make sure that it's coming down as we are entering first crack. I'm gonna pull a little bit of hot air out, just to slow it down so that it doesn't go too fast during first crack. With dark roast, we're gonna try and have a nice first crack to make sure we have enough energy and nothing stalling, but then start to take heat out so that we have a lower rate without, without any stalls. This is sort of the magic behind dark roast is making sure you have a good first crack, but that you don't take so much heat out to extend your development time that you lose those chemical reactions. So I can hear first crack, I'm gonna mark it there. I still have my halogen on, I still have my hot air on, I still have my drum heater at a decent setting. We're gonna try and apply a lot of heat here. We're gonna keep a, a very close eye on our ROR though. We don't want the coffee running away too quickly on us. We'll put a little bit of hot air up. And we're gonna take the halogen down to seven, but still keep it pretty hot. This is a great time to be keeping a very close eye on your RRs. They're gonna tell you if the coffee's slowing down, speeding up, 
how it's reacting to heat. You wanna see a bit of a slowdown at first crack just because it's releasing moisture, but you don't want it to slow down so much that you lose the chemical reactions that are happening during first crack. You can hear we have a great rolling first crack right now. Development time, we're gonna take it between three minutes and three and a half minutes. This isn't like a super, super dark roast, but it's gonna start to introduce some of those flavors that we associate with dark roast. My bean surface RRR is around five. That's great right now. We still have a long way to go, so I don't wanna push it too low just yet. I'm gonna take a little bit of heat out of the halogen. This is to make sure that I'm not scorching the coffee, especially as it gets near the end of the roast. The coffee is very delicate and very soft. And we wanna make sure we're getting great development without burning the coffee in a way that it imparts um, an ashy flavor. Our rates are still around five. They're creeping up just a little bit, so I'm gonna take a bit more hot air out just to have my environment temperature coming down. Pull a bit more out. Halogen can come down to three now. I can still hear a few pops. We might be coming just up on second crack here. Where I can hear a really gentle second crack. You don't want that too vigorous because that can actually fracture the bean. Things are looking really good. I'm gonna take a lot of heat out now just because I'm about to drop the roast. So I wanna make sure it's on a decline when I drop it out of the, out of the chamber. So we're gonna go for three minutes and 10 seconds of development time. You can see my rates are falling now. I'm at about two on my RRR. I'm gonna drop it right there. And that's a dark roast.